What DAT score do you need to get accepted into dental school? How can you conquer the beast that is the dental admission test? But first, let's talk about what the DAT actually is. Make no mistake about it. This is the single most important aspect of your application. If you want to become a dentist, you need to knock this exam out of the park. Lucky for you, you have your local dentist in your pocket right here to guide you each and every step of the way. Side note. Yes, it's crucial that you destroy this exam, but it's important to remember that admissions committees consider multiple other factors in their admission decision too. GPA is the other place on the application where you wanna put your mental focus. Without a good DAT and GPA, you can be the president of the United States and they still won't consider you as a legitimate dental applicant. How would you say your mental focus is? Oh, it's focused. <laughs> I, say it's, I think it's, I, I haven't, look, I have trouble even mentioning, even saying to myself my own head the number of years. I haven't observed anything in terms of, there's not things I don't do now that I did before. <laughs> well, you probably have a better chance than that guy. Anyways, let's talk about the DAT sections. One, perceptual ability. Two, total sciences. Three, reading comprehension. Four, quantitative reasoning. So the perceptual ability aspect of the DAT, the PAT section assesses your spatial visualization. It has six subtests that evaluate your ability to manipulate 2D and 3D objects in your mind. This is the most unique part about the DAT that's different from any other test. And in my personal opinion, it's a total mindfuck. If you've practiced perceptual ability before, you may be wondering if this has any carryover and actually has any relevance to real life clinical dentistry. And the answer is yes and no. Let's talk about it. Dentistry does in fact require a high level of spatial awareness and manual dexterity, no doubt about it. In dentistry, dentists must analyze and interpret diagnostic information like x-rays, intraoral photographs, and scans. This skill is also essential for tasks like tooth preparation, placement of dental implants, and even proper use of the mirror while using indirect vision. And yes, there are little games they've created that are used to test if you can mentally manipulate objects in order to visualize how they would appear from different angles. Tests like top front end, keyhole, hole punching, and pattern folding test these concepts pretty well. Whereas angle ranking and cube counting are pretty silly ways to test clinical abilities as a dentist. Yes, I get that crowns have a six degree convergence taper, and that's a strawman example for why it's being put on the test, but it is so subjectively tested. Overall, it's a game of practice, and I don't think it has much relevance to do with dentistry or how good of a dentist you will be. Because what I have learned from those grueling years of dental school and my time currently practicing as a dentist is that it all comes down to the hours invested with the handpiece in your hand. If you're in dental school now, hear me out. If you were worried about your hand skills and that your perceptual ability won't be as good as your classmates, I have some advice for you. The ones who become the best dentists clinically are not the ones who score the highest on the path. It is just a made up test to weed out people who aren't determined enough to overcome this obstacle. The ones who become the best clinical dentists and hit A's on all their lab practicals are the ones who simply stay late cutting preps in the lab. They spend extra money on plastic teeth, they fail more often during their practice sessions, and they learn from their mistakes with a critical eye. The ones who don't take shortcuts by breaking the neck of the mannequin and shy away from indirect vision use with the mirror. The ones who aren't afraid of failure are the ones who become better dentists. It's just like a rep in the weight room. Push yourself, go to failure. I promise, I had no relevant hand skills coming into school. I did pretty well on all my practicals and it translated pretty well to my current job because I put in extra time and effort. You all are capable, you just have to work for it. Nothing is given in this profession. So what score do I think you need to get on the pat? I think you should be aiming for a 19 here. Obviously shoot for the stars, but I think a 19 is a safe score to lock in on this section. But you may be thinking, only a 19, Dr. Rana? Seriously? But I just saw this post on SDN where this kid hit a 35 on the pat. Surely I need at least a 28 to get accepted. No, my friends, please don't compare yourself to the outliers on these social media platforms. You will get discouraged and it is unhealthy to constantly check these things. I tell you these things because I did it myself and it ruined my confidence. Be proud of the work you put into this exam and your score. 
because you definitely earned every bit of it. So in my opinion, perceptual ability doesn't have too much relevance in clinical dentistry. It's got nothing to do with what you've been studying your whole life for. So it really tests your ability to learn something brand new in a very short amount of time. Your patient isn't gonna ask you to fold a piece of paper seven different times and then put a hole punch in it and demand you tell them how it's gonna look before they give you a $10,000 for a treatment plan. Personally, I think the Canadian test of soap carving is a way better test of dexterity and spatial relationship. Tell me what your real thoughts are in the comments below about the perceptual ability test. Now we're talking the natural sciences section, the big boy, the heavy hitter, the monster you must slay. We need you to walk into the natural science section like McGregor before every fight. <laughs> I need you to walk into the natural science section with the confidence like this because it will determine your entire future. Failing to prepare appropriately for this section will have you severely wounded on your way to the finish line. Ouch. Could be all day. <laughs> Y'all already know what they're testing here, no surprises. Biology, general chemistry, and organic chemistry. Let's run through them and identify what I think you need to score on each of these sections to have a great shot of getting accepted into dental school. First off, biology. Oh boy, do I have a love-hate relationship with DAT biology. Easily the widest spanning section on the entire exam in terms of depth of information being tested. There's just so much information for only 40 questions. Why did they do this to us? My exam had questions on the smallest of details that when I saw it, I was literally just like, I'm sure it's gonna drive you crazy to study the Krebs cycle again and learn what the powerhouse of the cell is in your pursuit of becoming a doctor of dental surgery. But don't worry, you got this. With most of us being biology majors, the scores on this section should be higher and relatively competitive. Some of these concepts we literally started learning in ninth grade. So there's definitely a higher ceiling for this section. For that reason, I'm recommending a biology score of 21. And don't get discouraged if you don't hit a number like that. It can be quite challenging to hit a number that high. 22 plus would be golden, but under a 20 and you should start to be a bit worried. All right, let's move on to the next section, general chemistry. The general chemistry portion of the DAT, in my personal opinion, is the hardest section on the DAT. Why do I think so? Well, if you're anything like me, general chemistry never clicked for me as easily as it did for others. Hours of tedious lab work while balancing complex equations and formulas had me feeling very disinterested. I knew I wanted to be a dentist since the age of 13. So when I got to chem lab, I was always plotting my way on how I can get into dental school so I'd never have to deal with this class ever again. But general chemistry has an array of topics such as atomic structure, chemical bonding, thermodynamics, equilibrium, and kinetics. These concepts can be abstract and challenging to grasp. And the fact that you have to do math too, oh my gosh. <laughs> yeah, boy. Chemistry involves a significant amount of mathematical calculations, including solving equations, chemical reactions, and performing stoichiometry. There's also a cumulative aspect to it too, where it builds upon previously learned concepts and often requires students to integrate knowledge from various areas. This cumulative nature means that if a student struggles with understanding a concept really early on, it can hinder their progress in later topics, leading to like a snowball effect of difficulty. Also, chemistry is very abstract. The behavior of atoms and molecules makes it an invisible science. Students need to develop a strong spatial reasoning and critical thinking to apply these abstract concepts effectively in a timed manner. And you also have to analyze lab work too, which is so dry. So pay attention to those little details too. I get it. We wanna be dentists, not lab rats. I personally found this section to be super challenging. For those reasons, I will budge here a bit. But my recommended general chemistry score is gonna be a 20. Guys, I'm praying for y'all on this one. Just do as many practice problems as you possibly can. Spend some more time here because a strong general chemistry score separates you from the rest of the pack undoubtedly. While going through the study process, remain like a proton and stay positive. You got this. All right, now we take a dive into the third and final science section of the DAT. My favorite, 
organic chemistry. Not only do I think it's the easiest of the three sections, but it can also be really fun to learn. Develop your toolbox, hone your arsenal on this section. It's one big puzzle to piece together. This section came easy to me because my undergrad program was notorious for weeding out all the pre-med and pre-dental kids with their rigorous organic chemistry courses. And by the time we were done with the course, it wasn't called organic chemistry anymore. It was orgasmic chemistry. <laughs> the key here is learning the pathways. Memorize the reagents, the reactants, and the mechanisms. Studying nomenclature, basic stereochemistry, and acid-base reactions will get you that score that you want. I think what makes orgo hard in school is the fact that they give you a blank paper and ask you to just freehand a 10-step reaction, making it really challenging. But since the DAT is a multiple choice test, you won't be asked to write long organic chemistry reactions and equations for answers. Guys, that is a huge stress reliever for anyone taking this test. Seriously, it's the most straightforward section of the three sciences and it's tested very fairly. No crazy curveballs like biology, no difficult calculations like gen chem. Have fun with it and you'll do fine. But since I think it's the easiest of the three sections, I'm requiring a super high score here, ladies and gentlemen. So if you wanna know what Dr. Rana's recommendation for the organic chemistry section of the DAT is, I'm asking you to hit a 22 on this section. I know that's like a 90th percentile score, I understand, but it's totally doable. If I was able to hit a 25 on this section, you two are capable of hitting a really high score here. And that puts your total science score at a 21. This total science number is one of the most important metrics on your entire application. If you have some hiccups along the way, maybe a low GPA or weak rec letters, you make it up right here with the strong total science score. This is where you show them who's boss. The power is in your hand, my friends. Seize the moment. All right, next section is the reading comprehension section. If you've seen my previous DAT videos, then you know I think this is the most looked at individual section score from the standpoint of an admissions counselor. This score shows how well you can inhale and regurgitate information. This is a lot of what you will be doing in dental school, my friends. And subsequently, how well you'll do on your board exam. A score that has a lot of value to any school because they want to be boasting about a high average board exam score to all their potential applicants. There is a tremendous correlation to a person's reading comprehension ability and future successes in math and science. One research article has found it to be one of the biggest contributing factors for lifetime achievement, and I believe it. The ability to sift through hundreds of pages of really dense material and get a strong grasp of the concepts will not only save you time, but reduce your stress levels exponentially. In dental school, time quickly becomes a limiting factor in how well you will do because most simply don't have enough time to go through all the coursework numerous times while balancing all your clinical lab work. You'll see once you get into school, the kids who scored a 24 plus on reading comprehension have a godlike ability to memorize a large volume of information after only one or two passes and are able to get really high grades with very little effort. And if you wanna know how I practice for this section, I used a lot of timed MCAT practice tests to practice and it helped me. But show the admissions counselor that you're able to handle a high level workload here and you are set for a great DAT score. So for you and your own reading comprehension score, I'm recommending a solid 20. Lastly, we will talk about what I deem to be the least important section on the exam. Quantitative reasoning. The QR section measures your mathematical skills and your problem solving abilities. It includes questions related to algebra, geometry, statistics, probability, and numerical reasoning. You've been in math classes your whole life, they just wanna make sure you haven't been sleeping the entire time. I see why it's included in the exam, even though the only time I use math at work nowadays is to realize how much money I'm losing when Delta Dental is discounting all my fees. Guys, don't get me started on dental insurances, please. Let's keep this conversation today PG-13. But if you're watching this video and you made it this far, please like, subscribe, share, do the whole thing. So what am I asking you to get in the quantitative reasoning section? Please, for the love of God, at least an 18. A minimum 18 here, please. You never wanna go 18 or below in any section. But if it's gonna happen, it should be here. But multiple scores in the 18 and under territory, and you're contemplating a retake, so be very careful. 
And there you have it, my future doctor. Navigating through the DAT may sound like a daunting task, but remember, you have a friend and a mentor right here to guide you every step of the way. The DAT is important, but don't forget the other factors of your application, like GPA. All parts of this exam are very manageable and quite rudimentary, especially when compared to a monster exam like the MCAT. Perceptual ability may feel like an overwhelmingly tricky game, but don't worry too much about its relevance to dentistry. The real key to becoming a great dentist lies in the hours of practice and dedication you put into honing your hand skill. When it comes to the natural sciences section, be prepared to face it like a champion entering the ring. Aim for solid scores, but don't compare yourself to the outliers on social media. Be proud of the work you put in and the score you achieved. Reading comprehension skills are also vital for success in dental school and beyond. Show your ability to absorb and understand information as it will greatly benefit you in your dental career. Quantitative reasoning too is a section you must do well in. Don't worry, you've been learning math your entire life. Just make sure to give it some time and attention and show that you've been paying attention in class. Remember my fellow future dentists, the DAT is just one part of your journey. It's your passion, determination, and commitment that will truly make you shine as a dentist. Put in that extra time, embrace those challenges, and don't be afraid of failure. With a friendly smile on your face, go out there and conquer the DAT. Believe in yourself, work hard, and remember nothing worth having comes without effort. You didn't come this far just to come this far. You and I both know you have what it takes to excel in this profession. Best of luck and I can't wait to see you all thriving as successful dentists in the very near future. As always guys, take care, Dr. Rana signing off.